crime that led John Spankeling to death row took place here at this Tallahassee motel on February 4th, 1973. Spankelank and a hitchhiker, a former prisoner himself, had been traveling together for several days. The hitchhiker, Joseph Samankowitz, had a gun, and between them they had several thousand dollars. When Spankelank decided to leave Samankowitz, he claims there was a struggle, and he killed in self-defense. The jury didn't believe him, and John Spankelank was sentenced to die in the electric chair. We talked to him at Florida State Prison. Are you afraid to die? No, I'm not afraid to die, no. And we're all going to experience that sooner or later, but it's... I think being down north, there, though, it was the idea of what the state of Florida was doing. Uh, I don't... I didn't feel then, I don't feel now, that I had proper justice in the courts. Do you think that knowing that there's a death penalty would keep some people from committing serious crimes? Maybe some, and I don't think it would... most of the cases, no, I don't. Uh, there's so many passion crimes. Uh, there's going to be murder anyway in the United States. Despite the state's initial offer of a plea bargain, Florida's attorney general had no doubt that having taken his chances at trial, Spankelink should die. Spankelink had a long criminal record. He had committed at least eight to ten armed robberies and armed burglaries. Therefore, if you want to say that one of the reasons you should have a death penalty is that in certain kinds of cases, people are beyond rehabilitation and society has to have the ultimate protection against this individual, that's the Spankelink case. Stop the execution! Stop the execution! Stop the execution! As time began to run out on Spankelink, Florida's governor stood firm despite growing protests over the impending execution. Governor Robert Graham says he will not grant a stay unless new evidence is found. The governor also refused to see Spinkelink's mother when she went to the governor's mansion yesterday to plead for her son's life. She is now returned to the prison, where the mood is said to be calm among the 134 people under the death sentence. Plans for Spinkelink's execution moved ahead. At the prison, security has been tightened as final preparations are completed. The prison superintendent says conditions inside are near normal, except for a symbolic protest. We had uh, a few folks didn't eat breakfast. About a third of the population did not eat this morning. Why? I presume in sympathy with the, uh, with the condemned man. The drama played itself out almost like something from a movie, and the legal maneuvering went on around the clock. A three-judge federal court in New Orleans now stands between convicted killer John Spankelink and the Florida electric chair. The Supreme Court today set aside a stay of execution issued by Justice Thurgood Marshall, but it refused to disturb a separate stay of execution granted by Federal Circuit Judge Albert Tuttle. That means the full Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals in New Orleans must now decide whether to extend the stay or rescind it. In the end, the Fifth Circuit rescinded the stay, but that did not stop last-minute efforts to halt the execution. Stop the execution! We shall not be moved just like a tree. With the state of Florida rushing to get this execution completed before noon today, which is the time when the governor's death warrant expires. And at the same time, you have great bitterness on the death penalty opponents as they try to get a stay of execution. They are very angry over the fact that the last day was lifted about midnight, and just 10 hours later an execution is scheduled. They say it does not give them proper time to go to the courts and get a proper judicial hearing. Anti-capital punishment protesters gathered across the road from the prison, singing and chanting, as they had done three days earlier when John Spinkelink's execution had been stayed. However, the demonstrators seemed to know there would be no stay this time. And when the hearse arrived, many in the crowd wept. As the time for the execution approached, a contingent of state troopers took up positions in front of the huge prison. Inmates began yelling and banging on their cell bars. Only five minutes before John Spinkelink was brought to the death chamber, the U.S. Supreme Court rejected his final plea. At 10 o'clock, his five-and-a-half-year battle to avoid the death penalty for the murder of a traveling companion was coming to an end. 
At 11 minutes past 10, everyone was in place. Two hooded executioners stood by. A minute later, they were ordered to pull the switch. Reporters and a CBS News artist witnessed the scene. He had no opportunity to make a final statement. And, um, he simply looked at us and he, he looked terrified. There, there was nothing said. They uh, uh, flipped the rubber hood down over his face and immediately, and immediately afterwards there was a, a surge of electricity. He only really moved once. You could see his, his, his hands clench and, and, his, and his leg move. After that, there was, there was really no perceptible movement from him. It was, it was quieter than I expected. It was, it was less gruesome than I expected. What, what sticks with me is his eyes. It, he, he just looked at us and his eyes were wide and he was terrified. For his sister, who stood across the way with the protesters, and for his attorneys, and for his supporters, it was the end of a lengthy fight. When the hearse bearing Spinkelink's body pulled away, the noisy demonstrators fell silent. And some of the policemen, called murderers by the protesters, were seen holding their hats in their hands as the hearse passed by.